Hey you, you want a 5 on the AP Econ exam? You're gonna want to draw your graphs right. GPA Jesus here, and let's quickly cover how to draw the money market graph to get full points. This is a quick overview without much explanation. So this is how you'll hopefully draw your graph at the end once you reach a GPA Jesus skill level. But let's start from scratch. So we obviously have quantity of money on the x-axis. Sometimes you can just label that as QM. But if we now go to the y-axis, this is the trickiest part, because many people are confused whether it's nominal or real interest rates. So people just get confused, they draw on the wrong one, and they get a 4. But that's not going to be you after you watch this video. So yeah, if you know me, I've already made a mnemonic for the y-axis on both money and labor markets. The mnemonic is more new low rates. If we take the first letter of each word, we get M-N-L-R. This M stands for money or money market. This N stands for nominal or nominal interest rates. This L stands for labor or labor market. And this R stands for real interest rates. And so now you'll know that these two are grouped together, these two grouped together. Money is nominal, labor uses real. So using this acronym, we know that the y-axis is nominal. And we can add a percent if we want to at the bottom. So now let's go to the actual curves. For pretty much every demand curve you'll see in AP Macroeconomics, demand goes down. And how should we label it? Well, it's demand for money, so just MD for money demand. Then the main part of the unit, money supply. And in this case, it's not like your aggregate supply where it just goes straight up. Money supply is just a vertical line. And for labeling, you can just call that MS. It's better to put it toward the middle of the graph so that if you have to shift it, you're not going to run out of space. The place where they intersect, which I'll just give it a big yellow circle, can help you find where your nominal interest rates and also your quantity of money is, which you'll need that bottom line. And to label it, you could just call this Q. And then for nominal interest rates, you can just write I or IR. It doesn't really matter. And so that's essentially how you can draw a money market graph to earn full points. But just knowing how to draw it wouldn't make you all prepared for the test. You also need to know how to draw it shifting. So let's try a quick question. What will happen if the central bank uses an expansionary monetary policy? How will it shift the graph or interest rates? What do you think it would look like? Well, in this case, since we're using expansionary monetary policy, which this could be buying bonds, lowering the discount rate, or reducing the reserve ratio, money supply will shift to the right. And so we can draw this by just literally shifting it to the right. And so as we can see, quantity is now shifted and interest rates have lowered. So as a result, investment will increase and aggregate demand will increase. So yeah, that's pretty much all you really need to know for the money market graph. It's really not that difficult. And if you take away anything from this video, Try and memorize that nominal interest rates are for money market and real interest rates are for labor market. That's really the hardest part about the money market graph that people make the most mistakes on. After this video, you've been blessed by the Messiah of acronyms, and you're now going to get a 5. GP Jesus out, I died for your grades.